Africa's economic potential, I think, is to the roof. Hey, what's going on? This is Akon, and this is a word. Why African Americans should invest in Africa. Well, my investments in Africa, I can say probably started around 2004. Shortly after my Locked Up album, I said to myself, okay, I don't want to be that artist who was just a one-hit wonder. So the little money I make right now, let me start buying some real estate. Honestly, I thought Africa was the best place for future investment, mainly because it was still underdeveloped. I kind of racked up, I mean, thousands and thousands of acres of land just by the water, seafront property. And I always felt like, you know, the greater the risk, the greater the reward. Senegal was one of the first choices to invest in because I was home, I had family there. The most popular one I would say is the Akon Lighting Africa, which is my energy company. We're actually in about 16, 17 countries right now in all of West Africa. We've put up about 250,000 solar street lamps all throughout Africa, but now we've expanded totally. The business started with solar street lamps. Now we're actually doing solar grids. I'm building a crypto city uh, starting in Senegal. That one is called Akon, you know, Solar Tainment City, which is the first crypto city throughout uh, the continent. The music entertainment side of things, we based, started in Nigeria in 2008, you know, starting with the likes of signing artists like Wizkid, P-Square, uh, Davido, which is the iconic label group. This is actually four different labels, four different genres, and it's a global imprint. Africa has always been the richest continent in the universe when it came to natural resources. So there's no reason why Africa should be in the position that it's in right now. I remember telling everyone that, you know, we have a lot of resources. As you know, all the prime resources that's developed every major country are resources coming from Africa. Because when I say resources, I mean natural resources. I'm talking about uh, human capital, history, knowledge, marketing. In African Americans' minds, when you mention Africa, it's like this huge ball of fear just comes up when you say the word Africa because they've been so brainwashed to believe that Africa is a certain specific type of way. And I think the fear of not knowing is what halts them from not going. When you look at Africa from every angle, could clearly be that. We have the capability, we have the strength, we have the manpower, and collectively we actually have the funding. That is more than possible. And it's all from just basic hustle, because all Africans are born entrepreneurs. Like, if you go to Harlem right now, you're gonna probably see 80 fruit stands and they're all African, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When you combine African-Americans and diaspora Africans, that unity itself is what's gonna make Wakanda actually possible. I don't think Wakanda can be built by Africans alone. And I think that the, the diaspora have to be involved because the diaspora comes with a different set of knowledge. I think the wealth is naturally spreaded when jobs are created. It's gonna be nothing but job opportunity. And that's from every industry, from education, health, infrastructure, energy, I mean, agriculture, you name it. This is our chance to start fresh. I just don't see why we won't take advantage of that. Greetings again, brothers and sisters and cousins of the other races who support our struggle for economic equality with the other races. I realize that most of us who are from, who migrate from countries where we are the majority do not fully 
understand or know what it is like to grow up and live in a country where you are the minority in a country race a country that is practicing racism against you and you are a minority um, the uh, next segment is an American African American lady uh, I don't know her name I would be glad if somebody would uh, make a comment or something so I know her, her name for a, a future mention but she talks about the the way certain um, uh, Africans from Africa continental Africans in particular she mentioned Nigerians you will hear the video uh, criticizing African Americans that they don't take make use of opportunities and if they uh, co come here what they can do and what they would do and so on now I will say this that there are many opportunities that uh, people who are born here African Americans do not take advantage make use of these opportunities and the other races particularly when it comes to education and opportunities in business the other races they uh, take more advantage of it now so but the bashing I'm going to use the word bashing of African Americans I think that's a mistake the African Americans among all other uh, diaspora and Africans and even among continental Africans I think the African Americans as a key role uh, to play in the upliftment of the entire African race uh, and that's why Marcus Garvey I think as early as Marcus Garvey he recognized it and he came to USA and this is where his movement grew and had millions of followers and even recently I'm going to say about two years ago uh, in Ghana I saw a chief in Ghana who was talking about the importance of African Americans among uh, uh, as among the diasporans because of a number of things uh, and in my videos I always talk about their experience people talk about the education and financial and so on and that is very important but one of the most important things I find is they are not afraid of white people they have been living with white people and struggling and uh, and have won great victories uh, uh, particularly with the civil rights movement and the black power movement in in general I think the weakest part is in the struggle for economic equality with the other races the other thing is that people who migrate to uh, uh, another country are usually the more ambitious people from the other countries and the national a person born and you grow in the country uh, you, you look at things in, 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 in a different way and I think we have to realize this but the contribution of the African American is uh, I think it's so important has been and will continue to be the key uh, group of people in uplifting the entire African race outside of Africa and in Africa uh, and uplifting the entire race we have seen it in our lifetime with the Chinese what is happening with the Chinese what has happened and what is happening with the Chinese to the point now that they seem like they are bent on colonizing Africa uh, they uh, it, we know uh, I grew up in Jamaica and I've seen how different races and particularly Chinese treat black people uh, in, in, in Jamaica in all races there are people cousins who will help you who are supportive of your struggle you will have to lead play the leading role but you do have cousins in the other races who will play uh, very important roles uh, in your I I development in your upliftment and I know this from personal experience 
as well as uh, from a, a wider perspective. So let's hear what the sister has to say in, in um, the segment that uh, is coming up. I may have to do it in two parts, but let's see what happens. why your black ass would be able to come over to America and be able to do anything is because of the hard work, the, the blood, the sweat, the fighting and the dedication of African Americans who on this soil changed this land. African Americans are the ones who got this country integrated. Let me explain something to you. White people in this country did not give us anything. We have had to take. And this is why you see this is why you see what is going on in the news and the media right now. We took in the 1960s the what it is that we had. We took their lynchings, their terrorizing, their burning down of our neighborhoods, and we continue to rebuild and rebuild and revisit and retwist and re-rise up what it is that we have done in this country. And the only reason why anybody can bring their black ass over here from another mother effing country is because of what black Americans have done on this land. And I'm saying this as a person who is bicultural, whose father is not American, doggone it. My father is an immigrant, and he was able to come over to this country and do something in this country because of the black people who fought, who died, who bled, who were lynched on this land. So don't sit your black ass over there in some other goddamn country talking about what you would do in America. The only reason why your black ass could even get the F over here is because of what we have done. Doggone it. Listen to what it is that I'm saying. The reason why people are able to get onto the radios in America is because what black Americans have done, the culture that we have created with nothing, nothing. We have been given nothing. Everything that we have in this country, we have because we have taken. Listen to what it is that I'm saying. So don't sit your black ass over there in your country where you're not doing what you need to do with your government. If anything, you should feel inspired by African Americans, inspired to pick up your picket sign and take your ass off your seat and go out there in the streets and protest in your damn land. Remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel and share it with your contacts. Thank you.
Nicole Barham created a groundbreaking app for entrepreneurs that will simplify your life and save you time. And she's got the goods to prove it. She's had a chance to tell the world about it on Good Morning America, The Breakfast Club, Essence Magazine, Black Enterprise, and more. If you're a solo entrepreneur who is stressed out about how to track the money you earn in your business, overwhelmed with the thought of preparing for tax season or that important proposal that needs a budget, and you're clueless about how to understand your numbers, much less to run an accurate financial report, it's time for you to learn about 5-Minute Bookkeeper, the woman who created the app, and the story behind its creation. There's a saying that came up several times in this episode with Nicole Barham, and that saying is, necessity is the mother of all creation. You'll learn what was the necessity that sparked her decision to become an entrepreneur, and what was the necessity that motivated her to create the groundbreaking app. During this episode, you will also learn about Nicole Barham, her childhood in Jamaica, her early career, what inspired her to create the five minute bookkeeper, how she's earned multi six figures in just three years in business. Um, of course, you'll learn about her entrepreneurial journey and the mindset shifts she's had to make to transition from employee to entrepreneur. Check out this episode of the age has no limit podcast. So you can learn about Nicole creator of the five minute bookkeeper, financial strategist, mom, wife, and entrepreneur. It's the age has no limit podcast. We're here to show and prove that your age shouldn't prevent you from designing and living the life you want. I'm your host, Patrice Davis. Let's get started. Welcome back to the age has no limit podcast. Here with me is Nicole Barham, the creator of the Five Minute Bookkeeper. We're going to start off by learning a little bit more about the Five Minute Bookkeeper. So, Nicole, I would love for you to provide us your best description of the Five Minute Bookkeeper. Thank you so much for having me, Patrice. Mm -hmm. um, well, Five Minute Bookkeeper is really about how to help entrepreneurs, especially solo entrepreneurs, to get and stay on top of their bookkeeping in five minutes a day in a nutshell, right? It's a simple system that I created. And I know when somebody hears five minutes a day, they're like, I don't believe that. <laughs> but um, we have proven over and over again that this is a simple system that we created just because people were always scrambling to get their numbers organized. A lot of entre entrepreneurs don't know how much money is coming in, how much is going out, if they're making a profit or loss. And at tax time, they're always scrambling. So 5-Minute Bookkeeper eliminates that, makes it so simple and easy. And one of the things, too, I want our audience to know that you've actually been featured on a number of programs. You've had an opportunity to really, you know, share with the public at large about 5-Minute Bookkeeper. Do you mind telling us some of the places where you've been able to share some um, more details about the product? Absolutely. So um, I've been on Good Morning America uh, on ABC and also uh, The Breakfast Club. And, um, you know, just spreading the word because I just feel like not many people know about simple bookkeeping systems. When they think about bookkeeping, they think about something that's very, you know, difficult, something that they don't definitely don't want to do. Right. And so uh, I'm spreading the word about how simple and easy bookkeeping could be. And I got the opportunity to be on Good Morning America, Breakfast Club, um, been in Essence, been uh, in on Black Enter in Black Enterprise. Um, just, you know, lots of media getting the word out. I love that. I love that you're getting all the coverage. I'm glad that you created a solution for solo entrepreneurs. And I remember my days as a solo entrepreneur, even though I had various systems that I can use maybe to create an invoice or some of the other things, I didn't really, especially at the introductory level, did not have the reporting you know, capability. And it was, certainly wasn't something I could do in five minutes. So I really, really, uh -huh. really think that your product is amazing. But African country 
that will hear these words of mine. Create an, a country trust. A country trust. A South African country trust. A Zimbabwean country trust. Malawian country trust. Where the resources of the country can be taxed directly into this country trust at the end of every year or quarter let every citizen receive the benefits of being a citizen in those countries later on we can look at how to put all these trusts together and come up with our african bond as of an african trust where we can benefit from the resources that we are having as a country so this whole issue of foreign investments is a lie we need African investments. Are we not ashamed? South Africa, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Mozambique, Swaziland, Botswana, Lesotho, buying oil from Dubai, from, from Iraq, thousands of kilometers away from here. When Angola is here, one, two thousand kilometers from your house right here it must be a shame that our governments they shake hands and take pictures at united nations but immediately they turn their backs away from each other they hate each other because of the quality of information the colonialists have told them you president don't trust this one you president don't trust this one hey Tabombeki, watch over mgabe hey mandela you know watch over this you you you, you Kaunda, watch over samara Machel, watch over this one and these presidents are just walking up there greeting each other like they like each other when in actual fact they are been put in there as stooges of watching and observing each other in some certain countries even setting up military bases in surrounding countries so that they can manage the other countries that seem to be getting independent we can see the agenda we can see the agenda and after that you put visa requirements that we can come to your country it's understood we understand who is running the agenda so yes mining directly was involved in the migration patterns of the southern africa and that mining outfit to date it is one of the biggest leakages and theft of zimbabwean money into south african banks i have it on record 30 percent of some of the mining deposits that are on the south african stock exchange is actually minerals that are being smuggled taken shipped whatever way out of zimbabwe into the south african market and they're being declared on the johannesburg stock exchange south africa is one of the highest producers of highest producers for crying out loud south africa you can't even dig gold now the gold in South Africa is now 15 kilometers. I was there 15 kilometers under the ground, becoming impractical to mine it. In Zimbabwe, we are just starting on open cast. Where Johannesburg was in the early 1900s on the gold rush, where Kimberley was in the 1800s on the diamond rush, that's where Zimbabwe is right now. If the trajectory goes the way it is going, by the time we are 500 meters to one kilometer down digging our minerals we would have been able also to build an, our own cities just like Sandton and in Johannesburg but progress must be given its own way its own processes not running on propaganda so until we change our investment strategies as countries right now there's a lot shading yeah a lot shading but did you know that Kabora Basa Dam, if the surrounding countries, Malawi, Zambia, Mozambique, Botswana, Lesotho, Swaziland, can put their money in Kabora Basa Dam, this quarter, we have enough electricity for the entire region. Congo River has enough water to generate power throughout central northwest central africa but would rather be allowing foreign countries to come in 
sponsoring wars, destabilizing us. The war in Mozambique is intended so that surrounding countries cannot trust putting their investments in Mozambique and in Malawi because it's politically unstable. But the political instability makes sure that it, you cannot invest economically. Read through the thin lines and read between the lines. You see the devil waiting for you right there. We're looking for solutions. Now the Americans come around, we're going to be giving 8 billion, move over into green energies. Oh, don't get fooled, man. The same Americans are going to be selling you second-hand panels and solar panels to fit in your green energy space. It's, not, it's a non-starter. You'd rather take your money, Honorable President uh, Ramaphosa, Honorable President Manangagwa, meet up together quickly, gentlemen, presidents, meet up together quickly. Have an envoy, private jets, shoot into Congo. Go and look at that stone that was found that has electricity. Solutions are right there. Right there. Sit around for a conference in Kaborabasa. Sit around for a conference in Congo. Clear up the issue of power once and for all. And once power is available, imagine a bag of semen right now that is costing about $15 to $20 would drop to about $0.90. Cents. When cement is at $0.90, cents, imagine infrastructure development. Tarred roads houses and buildings because the building materials become cheaper it's a chain of reactions that must be understood the unlocking of power unlocks multitudes of other industries The major black movements that were mostly active in the struggle from the 1900s are the following. First, the Pan-African movement for black people to win political and economic independence in growing, uh, owning, sorry, in owning the resources and businesses in Africa and abroad where they live. Two, the black Muslim for black people to form a nation of Islam in the USA and win, win political and economic independence by becoming self-reliant and develop their own business. Number three, the black power movement for black political and economic power. Number four, the civil, right, civil rights movement for economic rights. Number five, the African Liberation Movement for Black Economic Liberation. The Pan-African Movement and the Black Muslims, also the African Liberation Movement, are all black nationalist uh, movements that basically want to establish uh, nations of black people in Africa and its diaspora. For example, the Nation of Islam is the first group of black Muslims. All the other end, sorry, at the other end of the political spectrum is the civil rights movement, which is an integrationist movement that wants black people to be integrated into the USA with equal rights as white people. The Black Power Movement is a hybrid of both the Black Nationalist and the Integrationist Movement because it's major, it's because it has major elements of both in its principle and its practice. Oh,
Remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel and share it with your contacts. Thank you.